The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How great a God is it for us to have that even in the description of the Psalms that it gives, there's so many troubles around about. The waters roar, the mountains shake, the rivers and the streams, everything. And yet in the midst of it, especially at the beginning, it says, God is our refuge and our strength. That's the Lord. Praise the Lord. But the, the verse that I really want to hone in on is the one that says, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, when I look up the, the definitions of the word, I was looking at um, the original language and there's three words that says, <clears throat> Rafa Yada Elohim. Now, I'm not doing a Hebrew lesson, but it simply means, it says Rafa is to relax, to let go, to be quiet. Yada is to know, to recognize by experience, and to know by experience. And Scott, Elohim. So be quiet and recognize God. Or if you wanna say, relax and recognize God. Be quiet, be still, and know that God is God. That's the Lord. You see, one of the things, especially in our society, is that we've become very busy. And in different ways, you we are often told that, especially in our world today with technology, you know, technology is supposed to make life easier. And the more I think about it, is that if you think of someone who used to just write and make copies, that was their job. But now that we've life has become quote unquote easier. You don't only have to do copying, no. You can do copying and sending. And if that's not easy enough, they will add something else to the pile. And so the ability to be still is often lost in our world. We're always looking for some way to keep active, some way to keep ourselves occupied. Often looking for ways to you know, pass the time. But it is very rare that we can sit still. Praise the Lord. When you think about when you're a child and sometimes mommy and daddy might put you in the corner. It's not punishment. They're just saying, sit still. And it's really hard for us because, you know, when you're young, you fidget. You can't stay still. You, you, you tell you to sit down and not even five minutes later, you won't get up. And you know, the same thing can translate in our lives if we don't learn to be still. Amen. 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 You know, it's something I learned recently and I really give God thanks for, you know, pastor in sharing. He says that when you pray, it's not every time you have to be saying so. And it kind of stuck with me because it means there's time for you to sit down and listen. Praying doesn't necessarily mean you always have to be saying something. And, you know, especially when you have your, your private moments, your private time. Praying doesn't necessarily mean you always have to have your mouth with words. Your, your mouth doesn't have to be filled with words for you to be praying. Sometimes all we really need, especially in this world, is just to sit and be still and know that God is God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, you know, sometimes, in, especially in this world, we, we do have to work. We do have to, you know, occupy. We still have to get our business. We have to set things in, in place. We have to prepare for things. 
But the one thing that we don't want to neglect is the need, especially in our day, the need to be still, the need to relax, the need to quiet our hearts. I tell you once upon a time, even in, in trying to pray, one of the battles that you can face is that because you have so many things on your mind, you genuinely want to pray, but you're praying and it's like the list of things come up and it kind of almost interrupt the prayer sometimes. And so it's almost like if you open a browser and you have 50, 60 tabs open, and you know, it's not like you can focus on the one thing. But my encouragement to us tonight is to be still and know that God is God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The yeah. I want to run to is in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28 to 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for you unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. The thing about unloading your burdens is to recognize that they are burden. Praise the Lord. Now, you could want to, let's give an example or an illustration. You could see someone who has a burden. Maybe they have on a really big backpack and you see them walking for a long time. And you walk up to the person and you say, let me help you with it. Let me carry it for you a bit. There's only two ways a person can respond. They could simply say, thank you for your help. I really appreciate it. And they offload the burden. The other response is, I've got this. Thanks for the help, but I got this. And so they'll continue with the burden, not recognizing that it is a burden. And so when Jesus says, come unto me, all you that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is a burden that we carry in this life. There is some burden, the burden of sin, the burden of the worries, the burden of, of not knowing what is tomorrow, the worries, the cares, the cares of life. All these things face us because we are in this life. And we could easily say, I'm fine. I've got this. And our burdens will continue. And our burdens would remain. And in carrying those burdens, there is no stillness. That's the Lord. But when yeah. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are labored and are heavy laden, he's calling especially to those who recognize that there is a burden, who recognize that I can't do, I really can't do this anymore. It's, it's coming to your end of yourself. Saying, I don't, I don't got this. I need help. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In offloading that burden, you are free. Your mind is free. Your heart is free. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, even in service for the Lord, even in service for the Lord, you know, work as unto the Lord, the scripture says. Bless the Lord. And you could also desire to do something for God. It is not to downplay service for God. Praise the Lord. But even in serving God, 
we cannot foresee the part where we have to sit down and listen. To sit down and wait on him. To sit down and hear from him. Because one of the things that can happen is that we're so eager to do something for God that we don't really listen to God. We basically take up ourselves and do something in the name of God, not waiting on God. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus is at dinner, or rather, I wouldn't say dinner, but Jesus is at his friend's house, Mary and Martha's house. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord. I'll start from Luke chapter 10, verse 38. He says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, a certain woman woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered, and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, one of the things I marvel with Jesus is he says. He came not to be served, but to serve. And it is funny because when you think about him ascending into the right hand of the Father, and we are called to be his brothers and sisters, fellow heirs in Christ, servants of God. We are to serve him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. But do you ever think that in the same way that he says he came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve, is the same way in that because he doesn't need us, that the same blessings he bestows upon us are really for our good. That in so doing, he, in a sense, serves, in a sense, helps. So he heals, he did service, he Amen. delivers. He came in the flesh and he did those things. He was serving. And Lord. we believe on him to be the same God who is able to do the same thing for us. Amen. God still serves. God still heals. God still lightens the burdens. God still delivers. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. I hope no one twists what I'm saying. God is not our servant. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that God still serves. And even as he serves, we are taught also to serve. We can't be any greater than our master. If we do exactly what our master does, then we are like our master. So even as Christ served, may we also serve. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord. God serves Lord. because God still gives his, his word because his word is still food for us. He says, as he said to Martha, Martha, you're careful and troubled about many things. And truth be told, we are also at times careful and troubled about many things. We might not be willing to admit it. We're 
thinking about our family. We're thinking about our friends. We're thinking about how we provide for our families. We're thinking about how we're going to go to work and sort out the project that is due or how we're going to go to school and finish this assignment that is due or our children, how we're going to send them to school. We're careful about many things and rightly so. We still have to care for those things. But Jesus says, one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from you. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, that's the Lord. So you can be busy. Too busy wanting to do something for God, but too busy to sit down and listen to it. Too cumbered about with everything else around and forgetting the most needful thing. You know, we sing the song, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Oh, what words I'd hear him say. Happy place, so near, so precious. Is, is sitting down at his feet precious? That's what we have to ask ourselves. May it find me there each day. Bless the Lord. So the same scripture that we started with in Psalm 46, verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's the Lord. It really is a call to learn to be still. In the midst of your plans, in the midst of your day. Be still. Be still. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the midst of your day, be still. Amen. A lot of things can grab our attention. A lot of things can take us away from Christ. A lot of things can pull us. A lot of things can grab our attention. And you start on that and it takes you elsewhere. But I just want to implore us that it's good sometimes to just sit down and relax, breathe. Sit down in Christ. Meditate upon his word. You know, one of the, one of the things I, I also worry about, you know, we, we, it's good for us to read the word, you know, but to sit down and muse on it, think about it, is very, very, very important for us. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. So one thing is reading. Meditating is also important. Bless the Lord. As we see in Psalm 1, it says, you know, blessed is the man who sitteth not in the seat of the scornful, nor standeth in the way of the sinner. It says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Praise the Lord. So, really, it's really a call to to sit down and meditate. Sit down and pray. Sit down and just think about the goodness of God. Bless the Lord. The Virgin. There's not much else to say. But I'll just turn to one last scripture. Taken from Isaiah. Chapter 30. And verse 15. It's so going to read a part of that scripture there. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. I'm just going to read a B if you want to call it B. It says, in returning and rest shall be shall ye be saved in quietness and in confident, confidence shall be your strength. Praise the Lord. In returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence 
shall be your strength. You don't get stronger by running around. It's, it's kind of funny, you know, you get stronger in, in the flesh, you get stronger by exercising and doing as much activity as you can. Yet, when it comes to the spirit, is by being still, is by abiding, is by sitting down quietly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, Brethren, I implore us as we go through this week, take some time before you start your day just to be still and know that God is God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord. Yes, the Lord. These are my few words to us. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the it's almost as if the workload has doubled. The fact that you're home, it's it's a lot more work. So let us take the time, you know, time to set aside time for God to be still in his presence, you know, whether it's just to meditate upon his scripture, you know, in that secret place, we sit down and we pray. We have to be still in a world that is so fast paced. Time the word. God indeed has brought his word again to his people. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank God for us being able to be here and just to listen to his word being on this platform. We are so we're so privileged that we can hear God's word like this. We can see it. We have the Bible. Let us not be take this for granted, Bridget. Let us take the time to show God that we really appreciate all that he has done is doing and will do for us or, um do for us so we just need to be still brethren praise yeah. the lord, lord. Amen. Bless the lord Amen.